Hi, I'm Walt Bartman, and I'm the founder and director of the Yellow Barn Studio, Clin Echo. And um, th this morning we have uh, Dr. Renee Sandell, one of our instructors. We're going to be interviewing uh, so that you get to know who Renee is and um, how important she is as an instructor at the Yellow Barn. If you were to take a class, I think that probably the first class at the Yellow Barn you should think about taking is Renee's. Uh, especially if you don't have a lot of experience. I think the um, most important thing uh, that Renee brings to her students is uh, the kind of ideas that, that students should have when they start to really uh, create art. And I feel that this is what she's done all her life. And we're fortunate enough to have her as, a, uh, as an instructor at the Old Barn. So I'm gonna say, good morning, Renee, how are you? Good morning, I'm delighted to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you. And um, what we're going to do now is we're just going to kind of get started just by talking a little bit about, um, you know, uh, Renee's background. I'm going to ask her a few questions. But one of the things I want to say to the audience here is that Renee really brings a, a lot of experience. So she's been teaching for uh, quite a few years. Her background, I mean, she's taught at a number of uh, universities and um, she's also uh, written a number of books, and I think that this is one of the things that's really important for all of you to understand that she's, um, you know, uh, really an, an outstanding educator, and uh, you're not going to find uh, anyone with Renee's credentials anywhere else. She used to run a program at, at Maryland Institute. Um, I think, uh, you know, she received the Lohenfeld Award, which, by the way, is probably the most distinguished award that you can um, receive in uh, the art education field. So as her background is really extensive. And I think, uh, as I said, we're lucky to have her. I've known Renee for many years. Uh, and so, you know, having her join our faculty really has made um, a difference. So Renee, I'm just gonna kind of turn it over to you. Maybe the first thing is just to say, well, how did you get started in this, uh, this art field? Uh, well, I uh, grew up in New York City, and I was fortunate to attend the High School of Music and Art, and I took, I always loved drawing and looking at art, and so I was fortunate to take art lessons and then get into the High School of Music and Art, where art was our, our key language every day. So um, I got into the practice and a lot of exposure, loving different kinds of media. Um, so, uh, and then I ended up going to Ohio State and getting a master's, uh, which I, and I, and painting, uh, painting and art education, sort of combining those. And uh, then I stayed and got a doctorate in art education. So um, I'm a, a museum junkie, love museums. And uh, I was very fortunate. The, I, before up to the pandemic for 10 years, I led a program in Washington called Summer Vision DC for the National Art Education Association. And this brought together 30 art educators and others uh, to do a museum boot camp with me in Washington. And we, um, we, it was four intensive days of going to a minimum of eight museums and uh, not only did we learn in every museum from the educators and, you know, and particularly their favorite strategies and, and artworks, but we were also marking and mapping. We were drawing. We had a portable studio, which will be part of this experience as well. So um, what I found is that uh, this took a lot of energy. It took a lot of action. Um, it was proactive. It was a proactive way of becoming visually literate. And I actually formulated visual fitness for all because I can engage everyone's creativity and insight. Art is a very complex subject. And this is a wonderful stepping stone to uh, discovering much more, looking at art and seeing much more and then being able to create. And those two processes work together. Well, you know, you've been doing this uh, for many years. You've taught thousands of students, and I know, you know, your um, your your experience. You bring something to um, the Yellow Barn that I don't think, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we would find anywhere else. I mean, you're uh, truly a, very gifted that way, and you're very inspiring. So the um, 
you know, when I look at what you're doing, I, I guess the main thing that I would say, um, you're going to be offering this class and it's directed at a certain audience. Can you speak a little bit about that? Oh, yes. It's directed at everybody, really. You do not need any experience or art background. Um, uh, it's, it's particularly for people who are curious, um, who maybe they never had art or an art history or it was so long ago, because now we are living in such a visual world. We see much more than we are reading. Uh, we actually um, have um, endless image, images affecting us. Um, and it's very important to understand, you know, um, other, if we don't understand then we're gonna be blind or blindsided um, or just clueless about what is going on. And um, I, I don't even think I have to stress this point, but we are living in a very visual world and we need to exercise our visual muscles. We need to explore more deeply and we can do that through practice, which is what at the Yellow Barn is about. Whatever, whatever the, the subject matter, whatever the a medium, um, it's a practice. And I engage people in that practice. So, you know, this could even be for an artist's spouse or child. Um, you know, for, sometimes, you know, even students, they're forced into one art. So they've done music. Um, in, in middle school and high school, but you know, what about art? We all need visual fitness. And I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit, kind of tell you more of what I mean, but I'm gonna do it visually rather than speaking. Be, well, I'll speak, but vi visually because you will be, I want you to see what I'm talking about. Yeah, and I, you know, when I, uh, what I know of you, and I know that what you're talking about, um, you know, this, this course is directed for the 21st century. And I yeah. think this is one of the things that people have to understand. You're not, talk, you're not talking about just teaching 17th century painting, all right? This is something that, uh, you know, really will broaden everybody's uh, understanding. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and maybe just take, uh, take over now and, and uh, okay. tell us more about what you're going to do. Okay, all right. Second here. Okay. In one minute. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. But we, we're only seeing the, um, the slide. We don't see the uh, slideshow. Okay, one second. That's where I'm looking for. I've got my. All right. So, visual fitness for all, <clears throat> engaging your creativity and your insight. Um, I have to say that for 45 years, I taught something called visual literacy. And it's, it's still taught and it's very important. But I took it to another level because it's not about teaching people to be connoisseurs or, you know, it's very interactive. It's community-based, just like an exercise, any exercise class, fitness class. And, um, and everybody, it's for everybody. So, you know, a lot of people grow up thinking, you know, well, I'm, you know, my sister was the talented one, you know. Everybody, you know, talent is a natural resource in everyone. So let me just share a little bit more. Um, and so, um, I think, as I said, it's for everyone. And there are three key elements. The first is focus. Everyone needs to focus. And particularly now since the pandemic and moving forward, um, we need a balanced way of seeing including you know, repetitive images of war and so forth. But in general, we all need to focus and everyone is capable of that. <clears throat> um, we all need <clears throat> access to our creative expression. We all can express ourselves visually. And I, I teach that. So even if you haven't, you know, on the other hand, many people like to doodle or they, you know, they, they make decisions on how they're gonna design their office. We need this access to visual understanding. And finally, community, shared vision, um, that we understand one another. Community also addresses communication, and we need to uh, do that as well. So one of the things that happened after I stopped teaching summer vision is um, I started doing online workouts um, for seeing more in life through art. And I began to connect, I had, 
I engaged people in looking at one work of art very, very deeply and, um, and relating it to um, uh, virtues. Uh, I've been studying the Virtues Project. And so for example, for Hokusai's The Great Wave, resilience. And we took so much, we took a long time looking at this work, decoding it through a method I'll show you. But what ends up happening is the community gets very engaged. A lot of times we work, we're in a museum and we maybe take 30 seconds as we look at something, we glance. And so my approach helps you see more deeply because it, it gives you more time um, and, and insight. You really can have insight. It's not remembering the facts that you heard from a teacher. So here are the, the two processes. One is engaging insight and in a little bit I'll talk about engaging creativity, but it's really about engaging your discernment. And it's not only in museums, but um, seeing the work yourself, not necessarily having someone explain it to you. Hang on, okay. So um, even a work like this uh, uh, by Honoré Daumier, um, which is definitely on topic with us today, <laughs> certainly I think of it with you, Walt, it, you know, advice to a young artist. We can look at this and notice many things, lines, shapes, colors, light, um, how, composition, how we move around the picture. But we also, can begin to, from all those things we see, we need to take time to discern um, the theme or multiple themes or how deep this theme could go. And finally, we need to know the context. If we don't know the context, we, you know, we're missing something, we're out of context. And that's where art history comes in and background. And um, so I wanna talk just a little bit, um, take you a little further in that and talk about my method. And it's called, for short, FTC, but it's form plus theme plus context or a balanced way of seeing. So again, we look at the form. The form is what we can see. That is the specific visual evidence. And it takes time to do that. As I said, people glance at art and they don't take time to see what is there. And all the, you know, all the process that the artist put into what you're seeing, all that visual evidence. Um, the second part is the theme, what we can discern. I call it embedded visual evidence. We, can, we begin to discover more about the work, subject matter, art historical references, interdisciplinary connections, the big idea, um, and viewpoint of connecting art to life. The third area, this is context, is what we cannot see. It's invisible evidence and authenticity, backstory, text, subtext, context, nuance. But we can Google and we can discover so much about the work's significance and relevance in history, cultures, and our lives. But what I find when people do this as a group together, they, they actually can discover it because they've been looking very carefully. So um, I just want to introduce um, this tool, uh, it's a single piece of paper, but it's called an FTC palette. And it can be used to decode information uh, and meaning, uh, but also to encode. And so what it has is, you know, uh, for the three areas, criteria, um, and then you put in the evidence, what you find. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. It can be used also for creating and has been. But I do have a picture of my visual metaphor for really discerning a work of art, and that is eating an artichoke. Um, I love artichokes, and I could get one putting it in my kitchen, and I just want to eat it like an apple, but I can't. I have to prepare it. I have to take the time um, to cut off the stem, uh, boil it in water, and so forth, and then I'm ready to eat the artichoke. I still have to take peel layers. And if I'm, as I go, I begin to get a little bit of taste on the inside of the leaf. And if I continue with it, I can get to its heart, to its essence, to, you know, to, and that's what we need to do with art because art, um, not all art, but art, you know, let's say a painting, it just sits there. We have to do the work to peel the layers of meaning. And it's, um, it's, a, it's actually almost a creative exercise too 
but it is, it's, it's truly engaging. So just, you know, just to apply it a little bit. So if we take Hokusai's The Great Wave, which is one I've been studying a lot since, uh, since the pandemic, and I'm like revisiting it even more, we can look at the form, theme, and context. The form are different aspects and elements. Um, and that if we take time, we will see a lot more and see how our eye works around the page and um, grasp the meanings uh, just visually. But then we also can look at the theme. Um, whoops, one second here. The theme, which is, um, uh, which is, is, you know, the big idea of man versus nature, overwhelm, um, and we can look at art historical um, uh, uh, images that certainly were precursors um, or related, and even films like Life of Pi. Um, and I, there are many more, I'm just giving you a few. And then finally, we need to look at the context. Who was this artist, Hokusai? And this is a self-portrait about him being the old man in writing, about being the old man who loved drawing. Um, and, um, and, and, you know, what was that about? And that this work itself was one of, uh, one of a series of 43, I think 40, 46 works called, um, uh, uh, you know, about uh, not just the Great Wave, but uh, about Mount Fuji. Um, and um, and I, what I have below, you know, also films in context, what are we dealing with now in our environment, um, our oceans, but even more. Um, and so, uh, and what I have below at the bottom here is one of my um, Pinterest pages, which is, which I call great waves. And I just collect, I've just got a collection. And so this, you know, this visual fitness comes with the more images that you might find. So I hope that's, that's helpful. And just seeing the process when I start my classes, almost always, we will start looking at a work of art and decoding it to be, to, to gain understanding and to be, you know, inspired to create. But a couple more things about this. Um, so um, there are so many contemporary images that, you know, we may not even recognize that they, it, it came from that work of art. And even, even when looking at emojis, which people are now speaking in emojis, look at all these variations. And I got this a couple of years ago, so there are probably more waves. But um, anyway, we are in a really visual world. Um, and so, one second here. So, you know, um, I, you, we, we, here's a great, here's a, um, uh, a, uh, FT, an FTC palette, you know, that really looks at the formal, the thematic, the contextual. Um, it's not an answer key at all. Um, it actually is something, some, I give them out partial, or this is one I give out. And you really, it's not just to get an answer, but it's to make connections between the lines and, you know, and, you know, diff different elements. So this is actually something you mark up. It's really something for you to add and kind of own your own interpretation on a visual piece of paper. So, um, so that's all I wanted to say about that. Do you have any comments on that um, for me? Well, um, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I want the audience to understand, you know, that what you bring as you really bring an in-depth study uh, to a piece of artwork, which I think uh, just opens doors to understanding not only, like you said, how it was constructed, um, you know, what the um, ideas were behind it, and then, uh, you know, who did it and when, so that uh, a, a student really doesn't, it never leaves them. Once they uh, uh, really go through this process, they really, uh, I feel, you know, just by listening to you, really get an in-depth understanding that, you know, they can draw on for many things, especially their own, their own work. So mm -hmm. I think this is a, this is really important. And there are very few teachers who will do this kind of thing. And I think this is one of the things that Renee, you know, when I look at what you do, um, you bring to uh, your students uh, is that understanding and that inspiration. So it, it really works out well for me. I, I think I, I'm enjoying what you're doing right now, thinking to myself, yeah, I've, I've looked at that great wave over and over again, you know, and it's really a, a, an impressive piece. And you're really to get that kind of background where the students, I guess they're the ones who really will be 
um, looking for all this. They'll be, uh, they'll be studying the, the painting and studying information and things like that, right? I think that's what we want yeah. to have them do. I'm so glad that you said that, Walt, because um, I always say that, the, that this is one way to own the work in your heart. And you don't have to pay insurance and you don't have security issues, but you, we can do it one at a time. Many of us had to memorize 100 slides. You know, we only needed this label information to get the answer on art history te test. The other thing is that we bring with us um, our own experience in present time. So, you know, even if I did this, uh, you know, looked at this work two years ago at the beginning of the pandemic, well, looking at it now, um, see new things. The other thing is, you know, like other visual fitness, um, like fi other fitness uh, kinds of fitness, you know, we don't say, oh, well, we, we did sun salutation last week in yoga. We're not doing that again. You know, in art, sense, we move very fast. So this gets you kind of going really deep, seeing more in life and art. And the other thing I want to say is that I am using this for other things. I've, I've got a FTC pal for decoding a museum itself as a work of art, where we look at its form, its theme, the context. We have different criteria, like, you know, what's the mission what, um, or what's the, um, what's the out audience outreach? But I've even used it for issues such as uh, sexual abuse and harassment. So it's criteria and evidence. So I'm glad I'm 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 excited about it, and um, I also think this is a this is a method that once you learn it, you begin to start wanting to balance your seeing. I'm looking at the form. Now, what's the theme? What's the context? And that could be just watching watching the news, which a lot of people are beginning to tune out of. But you know how are we, how are we perceiving our world and our lives? So yeah. that's the decoding part. Shall I go on? Well, you know, I think the thing that I'm just going to add is that it really uh, adds to your appreciation of art and makes you want to go and really search out a lot of uh, a lot of things. You know, I'm just watching this presentation and I'm al already thinking about the fact that I went last week to the Brandywine Museum and how interesting that museum was, but I went to see the Wayne uh, Tebow uh, exhibition and, you know, came back from that with a, a, a really strong understanding. And, you know, I think that you're bringing that to the students. If, if the student doesn't have that kind of experience, uh, they're going to gain that by studying with you. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So go ahead. If you go and again, the best thing I think is when we do it in community, people really connect with each other and they can help each other. They help each other see, but also create. Okay, great, thank you. So the second process is engaging your creativity. And I wasn't even sure what word to put under there. Inventiveness, imagination. It, you know, it's, it's, it, there are so many dimensions of creativity and everybody has it and needs to use it. Even if you're making a dinner party, you need to be able to generate ideas, elaborate, refine and then finally shape ideas into a meaningful form. So it's a lot of this is about increasing meaning. So, um, and, uh, and, you know, I just refuse to accept that there's anyone who's not creative. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it is your birthright and you can do it till you take your last breath. And uh, some of the methods I use really help access it. You know, it's really just to add to that, it, it's, it becomes addictive the more you get involved in this, you know, and so people will be really, um, you know, seeing more and, and being excited about more things. So you're right, it just, you carry it with you forever, you know. Yeah, well, you're and you're the perfect role model, <laughs> you know, the, the ever painter, you know, constant. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's an inspiration, and that's a great place for us to be. So I teach a method called, instead of calling it drawing, and it really is, in the, in the drawing I teach, it's really narrative drawing. I, I've got a, I'm offering another workshop that will deal with multiple modes of seeing, but mostly it's a narrative kind of drawing that everyone can do. It's an accessible practice for encoding meaning and feeling. This is my little landscape of marking and mapping. Um, but, there, but 
there are two guidelines and here they are. One, consider, don't fill, but consider all your space. That gets you thinking compositionally. And that's true if you're working on a little artist training, trading card or the side of a building. That's one thing you know that's required. The second, if you make a mistake, turn it into a surprise. We don't even use erasers. We just keep going. We keep restating um, and we discover new things. So let me share with you a little bit about the tools we use. And uh, this is the portable studio. Um, the sil a silver Sharpie helped make this more personal, but this is what I used. And I'm gonna um, try to do a little, a little demonstration. So let me uh, unshare this and okay i want to show you some of these tools um but first of all and what they do but this is a portable studio because we're i have some of these you know i can give you access to the container but the container is wonderful we were able to use them in museums for four days but here are the tools so the first is a sharpie pen and we learn to make you know, all kinds of lines from something controlled to something free and you see, make it into something else. Another tool we use is a Pigma pen and you can make thin and thick lines with this. So um, even if you haven't been drawing, you've been writing and, uh, and that's fine. Um, another tool, the main tool we use are Inktense pencils. And we just, we actually just have a set of six plus orange because it doesn't come in the six. And these colored pencils <clears throat> are different and people love them. They are intense, they are ink based. So whenever you, Whatever, however you might color with them and make different marks. And again, we're always using those same guidelines. Um, uh, you can also mix and there are different ways to mix. Now the favorite, the tool that people really love the most is this brush pen, which has almost no water. And you can move, take that pigment and use it around your page. So a lot of times we will work with, with a color and do a lot of mixing. We will do a lot of experimenting, but um, you can, these, once you have wet them, they are permanent. So you can use them on fabric as well. But anyway, I have found that making your own colors with the three primary and, this, and the three secondary colors will take you very far. And we can even, the point of that is if you look at the red and the yellow, when they're mixed together, they make this orange. This is the orange that comes in, uh, comes in the pencil. You can, if you look carefully, you can see that this orange has more form because it was made from color. So anyway, we experiment with a lot of that. And I hope that that's um, helpful. Um, do you have any questions on that? Is that kind of clear? Well, I think that, you know, I see what you're doing. Uh, the, um, the process of, of learning how to use these sketching materials, you're mm -hmm. taking them uh, or, the, or the students, uh, are they going to be, um, how are they going to work with them? Are they just going to, um, uh, is it going to be just a, a sketchbook that they're going to keep or what, uh, what do you keep have? They're sketchbook and they're going to do projects. Mm -hmm. And let me now take you to that. Um, let me share again. And okay. So we do a lot of experimenting. 
we work in visual journals. These are some of the journals pages from museums um, picking up. Uh, again, does every page is design, whatever size we're using. We also use, um, we, we're also gonna be using some, um, so I have it, uh, a number of square uh, tie, watercolor tiles. Um, but let me just show you, but I really want you to see is the range of color you can get with just six, you know, just six pencils. Um, we'll work with line texture value, endless possibilities. And so that's- these are, Let me just ask you this question. This is going to be, I mean, in other words, it's a, it's a basic drawing course for students. Yeah, but it's, yes, it, it does, it fills that. And um, it is, um, what I wanted to say is it's both, it's look, it's discerning and it's creating. Um, and working both together. So it's a, it's a fitness routine. So we always will have warmups, we will have high activity, and we will have cool downs, which include critiques, mm -hmm. and sometimes in breakout rooms. But, you know, we look at the, these things, and then we take time to work with these tools and get, come up with our own ideas. Um, and this, this is just an example of, of work from my uh, most recent Smithsonian class. Each person, you know, uh, um, tried to depict their own discernment. And this person was turning 75 and knowing it's the fourth quarter, she ended up, I'll show you where that went. But, you know, you notice that people can draw the things they know, like words, symbols, um, names, numbers, um, as well as expressive lines. And, and shapes and colors. So I'm gonna take you a little further here. Whoop. And this person, um, it was the week that Thich Nhat Hanh passed away and she actually took his statement and made it into this composition. And she actually used the FTC palette to kind of determine, she used it, you, we don't always use them because artists do it naturally but it can, get, it can be a very good tool for us to think through what are the formal qualities, what's the theme, and what's the context, you know? And then down here, she has the significance and relevance. Thich Nhat Hanh was a significant peacemaker in the world, he, you know, blah, blah, blah. So it's a, a way to gather your thoughts. So that, you know, that was, um, and, you know, and this is what I mean about narrative drawing but it also can include, because it's marking and mapping. Um, all right, so we warm up with colored pencils and techniques. And what I find is that people end up inventing their techniques. It's amazing, it becomes really personal. Um, and we learn that ink tents really uh, can stand out. So here's, here's after uh, just examples, you know, some people didn't, didn't finish something, whatever, but just putting everyone's together, the discernment where they began to add color, which begins to transform our thinking. And color is an element of form. It transforms um, what we're seeing and it, you know, it, it, it actually stands out more. And I, you know, I sometimes talk about, you know, there are a lot of people now who like to use coloring books. And I get that. It's fun, you know, coloring in shapes and picking different colors and arranging them. But how about doing our own? We don't have to do Disney's or, you know, someone else's, you know. So in many ways in this class, we, we use um, line and point and texture and we, and we expand it with color. So I wanna just show you um, some examples of, uh, what we did in my Smithsonian class was we, uh, we were curating our lives. So we created memoir museums. And this is this person's first one. And I, I think it was on endurance. Um, and then, you know, this is where it went. The other example she, you know, that she came up with. But, um, and that's what I mean also about narrative. So real, these became narrative museums. They were, they, from here, we created accordion books that were screens. Here's another one, recent one. And one of the things that um, I think is real, we learn that's very important is unity. How do we unify our composition by re repeating certain approaches, colors, and so forth. Here's the one that um, the 75 year old did and she said I could share her work. She ended up really <laughs> going very far 
So she's got Memoir Museum of Me, and it goes on from, in, you know, she repeated different elements. You know, it's interesting as I'm watching these and I'm thinking the first thing that hit me was Chagall, all yes. right? And uh, the other was David Park, you know, with, uh -huh. the, with his, uh, his uh, screen that he, he put together. The, uh, but both of them, I mean, these are two artists, I'm sure, you know, when artists are creating ideas, mm -hmm. they may not think about because they're not uh, necessarily uh, the names like Rembrandt or, um, right. you know, uh, Monet, for instance. Mm -hmm. you know, so I think that the, what you're getting, uh, for me, anyhow, is a, a real discovery, a personal discovery. You know, and being exactly. able to put that put that together, and this is a really wonderful piece that that was produced by Linda Atkins. Really, yeah. Really, and right. it, you know, and it, the other thing is, it's visual thinking. Can you see the fitness that sh that that came from just making you know making marks, expressive marks to begin with, and working with the t with tools? And um, so, anyway, I did. I wanted to share that with you, and. Um, maybe elaborate a little bit more on the classes, um, some of the classes anyway. So let me just say, so all of this, which to say that um, I am offering this class for the first time um, at Yellow Barn, <clears throat> I'm thrilled. It'll be Wednesdays, uh, April 27th to June 29th without June 22nd, but um, it's for all levels. And we will um, we will have a you know kind of a culminating capstone project because it's always important for artists to work towards something. So uh, our very last class will be an online exhibit that we will share, and I will also make a PDF that people can have. Um, but um, you know, I just invite you to come and see more in life through art in a very different way. And the the key word is practice. And just by, you know, by meeting once a week, and hopefully you will practice in your sketchbook, I'll be giving you different kinds of prompts, but they're all workouts and they all are meaningful. So, you know, they will, all of the problems I'll give you all have formal, thematic and contextual aspects. So um, I don't know if you have any more questions, um, but I've tried to give you an idea of what it, what, how it comes together. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, for me, honestly, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have a lot of questions now. I mean, you really answered a lot of what, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, this, uh, this class is going to be about. I feel that, you know, uh, anyone that's listening to this presentation, one of the things that you're going to see is that, um, you know, that you're going to cover a lot of the things that, uh, like, like you said, people who perhaps never even thought to be creative will be able to bring out that, uh, you know, that, that ability in themselves. And mm -hmm. I think that, uh, you know, it's, and it's under a very comfortable situation. I know mm -hmm. that you are um, you know, having them do some um, uh, assignments where they're going to have to do some, um, you know, uh, just kind of search out ideas uh, mm -hmm. for themselves. And I think that uh, that's where it becomes personal. You're just giving them a guide. That's what I'm getting out of this. And you're really letting the students really ex explore and through experience uh, really will gain a lot of, uh, a, you know, understanding of how to use uh, different materials, but also how to deal with the properties of design and line and color and, and that too. Uh, so yeah, it really, um, Thank you. All towards meaning, you know what? I'm a coach. Yeah. I'm a visual fitness coach. And, you know, and I love, you know, coaching a team. So um, people get so, you know, love being heard for what they've seen, love, you know, getting feedback. Um, so it's been really powerful. Um, there's another course, you know, I have several courses that I've offered. Um, I'm only kind of advertising these first, but um, uh, I can just tell you one of them is going to be an on-site course where we're going to uh, do a drawing treasure hunt with mm -hmm. special materials. Um, I'm going to offer, I'm offering some creativity workouts, intense, that's three hours on Zoom, and we will be doing, you know, exercises one day, and, and probably less in color, but black and white, but 
we, you know, that will be another, I'm offering four different ones and you can take them more than once because it's always different. It's like, we don't just sign up for one yoga class, right? Yeah. Or one Pilates class. Um, then another course that I'm teaching and I'll be teaching two shorter sessions in the summer of this, but is um, it's called seeing more, well, it's seeing more in life <laughs> through art, which is all I teach. It's called creating with light, drawing on our virtues. And we will be looking at virtues like this one is here is creativity and hope. And we'll be using some virtue cards, actually an app that you can use. And we'll be working on black paper, black Fabriano paper. And you can see all my mark in there. And we'll be also adding color um, to, as well. So, um, and metallics and white. So the, you know, the materials I've ordered and I've ordered them from Plaza, you know, are metallic colors, silver, white, and a, uh, 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 a Pasca marker, big white, white one. Um, and so that, that should be a lot of fun too. And I thought that's a lot of the work that I've been doing since. Um, so, um, and so if you feel like you want to work on, you know, it almost, there's something about it that it's almost like if you're old enough to remember blackboards, working on a blackboard or, you know, coming out with lessons learned. So um, we use a lot of, you know, some of the same, of course, same techniques, marking and mapping, but you can see how you can use words, you can use um, symbols, you can use repetition. So um, anyway, and please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Yeah, this is a, this is a great opportunity for everyone here to, um, you know, to think about taking a, a really creative course. And I think this is, uh, you know, we're, we were talking about just beginning students, uh, but, you know, um, families actually can really work out well. I mean, uh, you really, uh, I mean, this is, this is something where people can really work for, collaboratively. And I yes. feel, uh, you know, this is, uh, this could be a lot of fun if you're uh, looking for something unique to do, you know, and I think uh, Renee, I, I just want to underscore one thing. Renee brings uh, a wealth of experience and years and years and years of teaching. Uh, she's taught all over. I mean, you know, she ran the, uh, the art education program over at Maryland Institute. And I think, you know, that's, that alone speaks for it. Well, you were, yeah, yeah, you were training teachers for about 40 years. Yeah, yeah. I, I, but I, that's what I mean. I, I think your, um, uh, you know, your experience and uh, as an educator is really well known. And I feel, um, you know, with this, I think students will get uh, a, a, a real truly, a, what we would call the foundation, you know, which I think will lead them to um, thinking about art in a creative way, not just necessarily in, in, in technique, which I think, unfortunately, a lot of art, art classes do. They, they're a wealth of technique, but in a way, um, you know, work, the work has to become personal. And I think you bring that uh, immediately to their work. I mean, that's what I'm seeing. So, Thank you. Um, you know, if anything, that's, that, that would be what I would suggest. Well, with that, I, I, I don't have any more questions. So uh, you've answered them all. Um, well, thank you. I, you know, I just feel that also that you need to know that every course and every class, every workout will happen in, in a very present time in the world that we're living in mm -hmm. to make, to have us feel, you know, understand ourselves and our world. And, um, and what I have found is that people sometimes fall in love with it. Uh, some people, people are very often surprised. I didn't know I could even do that. Or now I look at things a little differently. And that is the goal. So whether you take one class or one workshop or this, a series, um, it's, it's intended to change your life, to really get you to see more in your life. Um, and, um, and I would have to say, and love art. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm just getting the idea of the fact that it's a visual diary. Uh, people okay. are, are really, that's what they're creating. Well, it's evidence. It's evidence that we were here. Yeah. You know, just as, just as an oil painting on, on site is, it's, it's evidence. And it's, um, the key thing is it's for everybody. There's nobody for whom 
this, this can't do something right. for and at any at any age too any which age. i think is which i think is really important for everybody to understand here but with that i'm going to say um uh you know thank you renee for sharing this i mean this, this is really insightful but for all of you that are watching you know these courses you can sign up through the yellow barn studio all right at yellowbarnstudio.com and uh, you can look uh, for renee's classes uh, there uh, one's on Thursday. What's uh, 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 well? Wednesday is the nine-week class. Okay. And this four-week class is on Thursdays in May. All right, in May. And I would love to learn with all or any of you. Yeah. I really always learn so much, and this is kind of this is where my art and teaching really um, meld. So thank you. Well, thank you again, and I'm going to say. Uh, Goodbye to everyone. And uh, if you do have any questions, just go to yellowbarnstudio.com. I believe you're going to find the information there. But if you do have any other questions, you can always call 240-626-4981. Uh, uh, and uh, there's uh, someone there that can answer your questions about uh, Renee's classes as well as the other classes at the Yellow Barn. Well, thanks, Renee. Thank you. Uh, and we'll. Uh, See you again. All right. Bye-bye.